Kyori Year 13. This is question one from last year's probability concepts exam. So in, I'm going to split this video into two parts because it's getting too long. In the first part, I'm going to go through all of the questions, um, including the merit ones, and I'm going to save the excellence question for a separate video just to break it up a bit. All right, so we're starting off with this one, which I would do using a table. So just pause the video and read through it. Um, I think it's a really good idea to highlight what we've got in the question. 996 students in our sample, and we've got one group born in New Zealand. And then we've got, can students speak more than one language fluently or equal to one language? We've got 35% of 0.6 of those born in New Zealand can speak more than one language. 69.8% of those not born in New Zealand can speak more than one language. And we're asked to find the probability that the student can speak only one language fluently. So you can do this using a table or you can do it using a tree. I'm going to do it using a table. So here's my table. I've got 996 here. This is going to be born in New Zealand, not born in New Zealand, um, speaks more than one language, speaks exactly one language. Putting the numbers in now, what do we get? Well, we first of all can get 781 here and 215 here. Applying these percentages now to the students born in New Zealand, I get 278 in here, 503 in here, 150 here, and lastly 65 here. And then I can add along the sides, 428 here and 568 here. Right? If you can't figure out how I got those, send me an email or leave me a comment and I'll go over it more slowly. Now we want the probability that the student can speak only one language fluently. Always start with the denominator. Which students are in my sample? Well, it's the whole lot. Out of 996, we've got 568 who can speak one language fluently, and we're going to give that as a percentage, 57.0%. Now, I did it as a table because I'm going to use those numbers in my next question. Right, explain why the events born in New Zealand and speaks more than one language fluently are not independent. So these questions are really badly done. So today I'm going to give you three steps to get them done really well, because this is a merit question if you communicate it clearly. Right, step one is to state what is your test. Right. Step two is to apply your test. And step three is to write a conclusion. So you know the test for independence because we've done that over and over. It's the PA times PB thing. So if born in New Zealand and speaks more than one language are independent, then probability of born in NZ times the probability of more than one lang should equal, oh, it's been happening all day, should equal the probability of born in NZ and more than one language. Now I can hear my class groaning at me down the computer. But if you set this out really well, you show that you actually know what you're doing. So that's step one. That's my test. So step two is to chuck in my numbers and work them out. Right? So the probability of being born in NZ is 7, 781 over 996. The probability of speaking more than one language is equal to 428 over 996. We might as well do them as decimals, so 0 0.4297. And this one here is point zero point. Oh, no. Um, it's because I've got a fancy new touchscreen laptop, and I don't know what I'm doing. Right, so that's the two separate probabilities. Now, 
what's the probability of both those things happening? So born in New Zealand and more than one language. So we're still going out of 996. But my numerator is going to be 278 over 996. So that probability is equal to 0.2791, which is not equal to 0.7841 times 0.2791. Four, two. I'm sorry about how slowly I'm going. I'm trying not to have the stupid stylus thing happen because those two numbers are equal to point three three seven zero. So that's step two. And then lastly, I'm going to say because of that, these events. aren't independent. Okay, so that is a very good answer to that question because it shows that you've, you know what the test is and you've applied the test and you've made a conclusion from the test. We're going to use that method from now on when we're answering questions about this and mutually exclusive. All right, now we've got a change of information. We've got three tables and now we're looking at cell phone ownership and whether students have Facebook or not. The first question we're asked here is a really easy one, which is to figure out the probability that the student is female and doesn't have a cell phone. So we want to work with this um, table here. So probability female and no cell. Still going to be out of 996. Um, but it's just going to be 52 students. So that's... 0, 0.0 something, 5, I think it's 0 0.052. There we go. Um, so that's that one done. That's just an achieved question. Lastly, one looking at mutually exclusive. So we're going to follow the same idea. What's our test? Apply the test. And number three, conclude. So TAC, T-A-C. Right, so if... Facebook and cell are mutually exclusive, then the probability of Facebook and cell happening will be zero. But now we're going on to step two, we're applying the test. That probably is very not zero because there are 750 people who've got Facebook in a cell phone. And that's not the same as zero. So the events aren't mutually exclusive. There you go, there's another merit question. So if you've got both that and the independence one, you're on an M6 for that question already. But if you do a really slack job at answering them, it's pretty easy to get either nothing or just another U code. Okay, this video is nine minutes long already. Um, miraculously, it seems like it's worked well enough to upload. So I'm going to upload this one now. The excellence question is the next one, and it's a Venn diagram one. So I promise I will do that, if not tonight, then tomorrow. Um, not that you're all sitting on the edges of your seat or anything. Um, thanks for watching and please let me know about any technical issues apart from the skipping back and forth.